Welcome! Today I'm going to make plastic from milk. So, not actually today, but I'll at least start with it. So here I have 100 milliliters of fresh cold milk right from the fridge. It's the 1.5% fat if you're interested. First thing I'm going to do is top this off to around 300 mils. Um, 400 is probably better. So I've added some water and an insect that landed in the water, but well, the insect won't be important. I'll get rid of it later. In the next step, I'm going to add acetic acid. You can use 25% vinegar, uh, you can use 5% vinegar, just have to use a bit more, this is 60% and probably way too much, so I'm not going to add all. The addition of vinegar uh, will throw out the protein, destroy its microstructure and the protein will then form little clumps that can be filtered off. So filtering the protein is painful. I'm going to add a little bit more here. But it definitely works. So you already can see that on the wall of the beaker there are all these little protein clumps and lumps forming. You see them in, in here. And if I let this settle now for a little longer you will clearly see the protein all floating around in here and forming bigger clumps that can then be filtered off. So I'm going to let this sit and prepare it on a larger scale than that because uh, you do not get the very huge amount of protein from this. And then I'm going to filter it and then we will see this again. Just a little thing I'd like to show you. Look at the protein and how it flakes out. So just let it sit a little bit longer and then it's ready to filter. So here I am with the milk protein. I filtered off fresh milk. It's windy today because weather always decides to turn bad if I want to do a chemistry video. So you can let this dry on air and it will yield some kind of plastic if it's really fully dry but it's never resistant to water and it's not really hard either. It's, it's kind of like cheese like really dry cheese. So, well, that's basically how cheese is made. It's mostly milk protein and fat. So today I'm going to harden this using formaldehyde. And first of all, I need to bring this into nicer shapes than this, basically. So I'm going to make some, some flat pieces. And I'm maybe trying to make some shapes, like a little heart or something like this or a star. I'm not really sure, so I'll turn this camera back on once I've done something productive. You see, certainly I'm not the world's most talented craftsman, but I tried my best. I've made a formaldehyde solution around 25% formaldehyde, and I'm going to add these pieces to overnight. So this is protein, and they have quite a lot of amino groups and they are going to be cross-linked by the formaldehyde uh, under the formation of methylene bridges. Um, let me add in these pieces in um, hopefully they stay intact. So I'm just going to let this soak overnight and tomorrow they should be quite hard actually and I should be able to fish them out of the water. So in this stage, the wet protein is actually quite well workable. Let's see how many cracks there are already in and how many there will be tomorrow. So everything is added. Some is crackier than other stuff. So the only thing left 
wait let's check back tomorrow so for those of you who are interested in what's actually going on so here in the top you see we have a protein polymer protein or milk protein which has a amino group uh, a nitrogen with a hydrogen attached and then there comes formaldehyde along and it splits off water and forms a methyl bridge between those two nitrogen molecules essentially interconnecting the individual protein polymer change, uh, chains forming um, a solid network of individual protein strings that are all tied together now um, it's a bit comparable to Bakelite and while I'm already talking about Bakelite guess what comes up in the next video it's going to be Bakelite and I even built a Bakelizer here we have it the protein pieces from yesterday after one night in formaldehyde solution here's a bunch of water so let's see what we get I wonder if the ball is hardened through through all the material or if it's just on the surface so maybe let's soak this a little bit to get out the formaldehyde I'll be back in a few minutes so it's definitely much stiffer it's no longer a paste but to say it's hard not really you can easily crush it if you apply enough force and then it just breaks but it is not um, that pasty anymore see it makes a very different sound if you drop it so it worked sort of maybe just dry it so I just leave this here and all these little bits they are not pasty they are all like crumbling like like uh, sand or gravel so it, it definitely changed um, I'm just gonna let this dry here and see how it turns out then and time was all it needed after two days of drying it became this white and very very tough solid so I can't break it with my fingers it's really really tough here's another piece of it they were all broken apart before it uh, fully dried and hardened and it is very very tough so it definitely worked making plastic out of milk you see it's not going to break that easily and of course the quality of, his, of it is not extremely high but I'm very satisfied with my bits of plastic that I made from milk and formaldehyde.